Hello, lovely internet strangers. Welcome to my new corner. I decided to move things around in my bedroom so my desk would be closer to the window because it makes me happy. So my bookshelf is in this corner now and I thought that I would add a bit of a background to my A Square Corner videos and see how that goes. In today's video, I am going to discuss the recent lawsuit filed against Netflix because of a false statement made in their series, The Queen's Gambit. In case you have no idea what I'm talking about, I will go over the specifics of the case. I actually found the text of the lawsuit itself. And the reason I wanna talk about this case is because it's related to TV, which is a huge interest for me. It's related to chess, which is something that I have a personal connection to through my dad and not the deepest knowledge, but certainly a deeper knowledge than the average person. And this case really illustrates why I so often shy away from watching modern television. I don't think I've watched a show that has started in the past three or four years, and that's largely because of the increasing amount of political agendas taking the place of actual storytelling, and in this case, actually undermining the trailblazing efforts of a real woman in a male-dominated field in service of their dramatic feminist narrative. Okay, so The Queen's Gambit is a Netflix series that is an adaptation of a novel by the same name that was written by Walter Tevis and published in 1983. So it's a relatively older novel and was published at a time much closer to when chess had more of a moment in the public eye, when a lot of chess champions were on the rise. And the book centers around the rise of a female American chess champion. He said he did not base his character on anyone specific. And his story was definitely very fictional because as far as I'm aware, someone can jump in and correct me if I'm wrong, but there are no famous female American chess champions. They're all from Central or Eastern Europe, the Soviet bloc back in the day, China, places like that. So Netflix did an adaptation. It came out last year. In the series, there is a line that is not taken from the novel. Netflix decided to change the line. In the novel, Beth Harmon is at the Moscow Invitational and Tevis wrote, as far as they knew, Harmon's level of play was roughly that of Benny Watts, and men like Leia would not devote much time to preparation for playing Benny. She was not an important player by their standards. The only unusual thing about her was her sex, and even that wasn't unique in Russia. Just a warning, I do not know how to pronounce this chess player's name. There was Nona Kaprindashvili, not up to the level of this tournament, but a player who had met all these Russian grandmasters many times before. Leia would be expecting an easy win. Now, in the show, this is what was said by an announcer. As far as they knew, Harmon's level of play wasn't at theirs. Someone like Leyev probably didn't spend a lot of time preparing for their match. Elizabeth Harmon's not at all an important player by their standards. The only unusual thing about her, really, is her sex. And even that's not unique in Russia. There's Nona Gaprindashvili, but she's the female world champion and has never faced men. My guess is Leyev was expecting an easy win, and not at all the 27-move thrashing Beth Harmon just gave him. So... Let's talk about the problems with this and why this lawsuit is being brought and my general thoughts on the whole situation. So, Nona Goprindashvili is a real woman who is still alive. She's a Georgian woman. She was the first woman to be awarded the title of Grandmaster at the time that the Moscow Invitational is supposed to be taking place in the Netflix series. She had definitely already faced men and she had beat many men. But such details would clearly interfere with the feminist agenda of Netflix and just their general desire to make their story more dramatic, like, look, our fictional character is doing something that no woman has done before. Sorry, not true. So after the series came out and everyone who watched it heard this line uttered, many websites published articles calling Netflix out for this, people talked about it on social media, and Nona had reached out to Netflix through her legal team to communicate her concerns, and Netflix dismissed the line as innocuous and did not offer any acknowledgement or apology or statement, and that's why she's filing the lawsuit now. Netflix could have just dealt with this very easily by just issuing a simple public statement saying that they messed up, they got this wrong, but they didn't. So she is suing for false light invasion of privacy and defamation per se. The text of the lawsuit states that by 1968, the year in which this episode is set, Caprindishvili had competed against at least 59 male chess players, 28 of them simultaneously in one game, including at least 10 grandmasters of that time, and that these facts were well known to Netflix, 
or at least they should have been, both from the novel, which stated that she had met all these Russian grandmasters many times before, and because it had hired two of the world's leading chess authorities as consultants for the series, the legendary Garry Kasparov, a Russian former world champion, and American national master Bruce Pandolfini, considered to be America's most experienced chess teacher and a consultant to Tevis when he wrote the novel. And I can confirm that he is considered one of the world's experts on teaching chess, because I have borrowed several of his books from my father. So there you go. So this lawsuit states a lot of my thoughts. One being that Netflix had no need to use her actual name. They could have made up a fictional female chess player. Or if they are going to refer to her by name, like Tevis does in the novel, then they didn't need to change the line and make a false statement. And that they were clearly doing it to make it a more dramatic story. She and her legal team are claiming that this statement, this downgrading of her accomplishments, of sweeping her trailblazing career under the rug, are damaging her reputation reputation, which is important to her to still make money in her profession of chess. And she's trying to both vindicate herself and her name, but also set an example to other wronged women by reminding them that they can fight back against this sort of thing. I was genuinely surprised that this happened because, as my loyal subscribers will know, I worked in the publishing industry for several years, and with any novel being published, there are always people who are looking for things like a real person, a real corporation being mentioned in a novel, and are there any false statements being made? Are there any lines in this novel by which that real entity could sue us for defamation? This happens at even independent publishing houses. So the fact that Netflix, which is a huge media company, and this is not exactly their first rodeo, let this go through was really surprising to me because it was something that could have been so easily avoided. But I guess I can kind of understand why it happened and why they thought that it would just be fine because they care more about the agenda. They care more about pandering to a certain kind of audience, I suppose, because these kinds of false narratives fit in with what feminists have been pushing for years. Well, Feminists will on the one hand say, people ignore the accomplishments of women. But on the other hand, they'll be like, it's so hard for women, women can't do anything. So we have to write these stories about women doing stuff, even though there's plenty of real women that already did stuff. So in the service of pumping up the drama for their fictional female chess player, they literally erase the accomplishments of this actual, real life, still alive, female chess playing badass who was a trailblazer, who wrote about, spoke publicly about her experiences being a female chess player, about there no longer being a need for a separation between women and men in chess. She encouraged women to not limit themselves in playing women's chess, showing them they could compete with men. And it's really telling to me that in the show, they have that line about Beth's opponent not expecting the 27 move thrashing that she gave him because they're trying to show like, She's doing something no one's done before. But the real woman that they're throwing under the bus here was known for her aggressive playing style. And she famously played in a tournament against a man where the match went until there were virtually no pieces left on the board and the two players agreed to a draw. The match was later declared to be the best chess game of the year by the Soviet Chess Federation, which was the first time this accolade had been bestowed on a game ending in a draw. And the match took a psychological toll on her opponent to the point that he did not participate in tournaments for a year afterwards. So you have have this real life female chess playing badass and you have to throw her under the bus in service of your fictional one. You could just make up another female chess player and throw her under the bus. But even that is stupid because yes, this is a fictional world where there's a fictional female chess player, but it's clearly supposed to be analogous to our real world and people who are watching it are clearly viewing it that way. And as all my loyal subscribers will know, I'm no longer a feminist, but I hate hypocrites and I believe in the truth. And I have a certain set of morals which say you're garbage for denigrating someone else's accomplishments, whether they're a woman or a man, in service of your own narrative. If they really wanted to be feminist and promote women, they they could have made their change such that this fictional female chess player was inspired by what Kaprindashvili had already done and seeing her meteoric rise as an inspiration. But no, no, we can't have that. There can only be one. 
There can only be one woman doing the thing. Otherwise, the whole feminist narrative just poof, disappears, shown to be a load of hooey. And so the lawsuit shows that Netflix really has no leg to stand on because of the chess consultants that they hired. And those chess consultants are well, well versed in chess history. Either they did not consult them fully or they were told by their chess consultants about the realities of Caprindashvili playing men by that time and Netflix ignored it. So this is how the lawsuit is showing malice against her. And as far as the false light invasion of privacy, the lawsuit is under the jurisdiction of California. And in California, you have a case if somebody places you in a false light in the public eye. One, the publication or broadcast of a false statement of fact that places a plaintiff in a false light in the public eye. And two, a demonstration by clear and convincing evidence that the statement was published or broadcast with actual malice. And three, a demonstration that the publication or broadcast of the falsehood would be deemed highly offensive to a reasonable person. They say that they think that the false statement that she had never faced men would be highly offensive to a reasonable person, to any woman who had spent a large part of their career facing men, breaking glass ceilings, because it is true. She was a trailblazer in a male-dominated field. A lot of the men that she competed against were not happy that they were getting beat by a woman. There's a lot of reasons why there are a lot more men who play chess in general, who are chess champions, etc. But what women were up against at that time as far as the response from a lot of male opponents was real. So she is now suing for actual and presumed damages of at least $5 million, punitive damages. She's also trying to get them to remove the statement that she never played men from the series and also suing for costs of suit and anything else the court decides to throw in there. So this is why I really don't watch much modern TV because most of these series are not about just telling a story. There's an agenda. Jane the Virgin came out in 2014. And I was initially wary about the show because it was an American adaptation of a Venezuela novella that I had watched in my middle school years and loved. And I thought there was no way they could do it justice, but they actually did. And it was so much of a love story to novellas and it was so much more than I ever could have hoped for. So the show started in 2014, but as the show went on and got closer and closer to current year and the culture wars and more blatant agendas, in TV and movies, it got super heavy handed about the immigration issue because the grandmother is undocumented, which I was totally fine with when they brought that up in the first place. It's a common situation and it's totally fine if you want to have a plot line about her eventually getting her citizenship or it being an issue of someone finding out that information and trying to use it against her because it's a novella. This is a plot point rife for drama, but they got so heavy handed about it so fourth wall breaking to the point that it just took me completely out of the story every time they did it. And it was happening more and more where they'd have the characters speak these lines that were clearly supposed to speak directly to the audience sitting out there like, hey, you, this is our political message about this issue and you should pay attention. It's like, no, if you cannot convey to me what you want me to know, even your political message through the story, then leave it out. It does not belong here here. Sorry. I talked to my dad who still watches modern TV and he is about to give up on watching recent shows because they're always just doing things that are clearly in the service of a woke agenda, make the story awful, whether it's something original, whether it's an adaptation and they're changing stuff from the original to make it in service of their agenda. There have been shows where he was really excited at the beginning and then the wokeness showed itself and it just became really depressing and unwatchable. So I stay away from all that. I just watch older stuff. My husband and I are currently watching Star Trek TNG. So I just wanted to make this video and comment on it because it touches on a few different things that are of interest to me. TV, female characters, the woke slash feminist agenda, 
ruining media, and the general hypocrisy of people in these movements who say that they're championing the marginalized, that they're championing women against the evil patriarchy, but that doesn't matter. They'll throw real women under the bus to do it. And as I mentioned, chess, even though I never got really, really into playing chess, chess is really important to my father, and he taught me how to play chess when I was a kid. I still know how to play chess. I could sit down and play a game of chess with anyone right now. I would get my butt kicked very easily, but I could do it. So I also wanted to comment because of that, because I do know a lot about the history of chess, of male players, female players, because my dad, like me, is a huge nerd about stuff. So it's not just that he played chess. He was a big nerd about chess. I saw this getting talked about a little bit, but I kind of just wanted to throw my two cents in there. So that's it for this video. I always welcome all your comments, mean ones, nice ones. I'd love to hear your thoughts about the Queen's Gambit incident, about whether you're still watching current TV, or if, like my father, you're about to give up on the whole enterprise, or if you're like me and you've already given up on that enterprise a while ago. Thank you for watching. If you liked this video, please give it a like. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe, and I will have more content for you very soon.